Let's. Uh, there were a few uh, questions in the break, and I understand your questions. Let's make this problem, please, simpler. Can you just remove this and say U? So it's a single input system. Single input system. Then this will be a lot more easier to explain. Um, this was a little bit more than what I wanted to talk about today. So I think this was good enough. Okay, so the next topic is actually a quite important one. Next topic is controllability and observability. Okay? Two important concepts that we need to talk about here in this, in this class, and really you have to understand this quite well. Um, I, I want to start with an example and try to explain you what, why these two terms are important. All right? Let's start with this. Um, I'll give you an example. Let's say I have a system that looks like this minus 2x plus 2u. y is equal to 3x, right? So this is like a first order type system, OK? Um, it's a still a state space representation. And let, let's look at the transfer function of this, OK? Let's look at the transfer function of this. And since it's a single input, single output system, it's quite straightforward. It is s plus 2 x is equal to 2u, right? And then um, s plus 2, i divided by 3 is equal to 2u. y divided by u is equal to 6 divided by s plus 2. And therefore, the transfer function is that, 6 divided by s plus 2, OK? This is a stable system. You look, the root is minus 2. Yes, it is a stable system. First order differential equation. And this is your um, uh, transfer function. OK? So let's look at another example. This is kind of straightforward. Let's look at another example. And that example, example 2, right? Let's look at that example. Here the example would be like this. x dot is equal to minus 2, 0, 0, minus 1, x plus 2, 0, u. And y is equal to 3, 2, x. OK? Second order system. Again, we have one input and one output, right? One input, one output, but the states, we have two states, and therefore it's a two-dimensional system. It's a two-dimensional system, okay? So, you want to look at G of S, and we had the G of S representation over there. So that would be 3, 2, right? That's C. And then it would be SI minus A over minus 1. So it would be um, S plus 2, 0, <coughs> 0, uh, S plus 1 over minus 1. Um, and B would be. Uh, 2, 0, right? And you would find this. Now, if you do this, what you will find is, again, 6 divided by s plus 2. So I'm not going to do this a lot more than it should. OK? So, and this is also a transfer function here. So here's, here, here's a, the interesting observation. This is a second order system, yet we have only one root coming from the characteristic equation, which is minus 2. Right? Over here, this is a first order equation. And we have, again, one root. right? And in fact, we have the same transfer function. 
So observation number one, a transfer function, I mean, two different dynamic systems can have the same transfer function, first of all. So if I have one transfer function, it doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, because it doesn't necessarily mean that the dynamic system is the same. I mean, there's, these are two different dynamic systems. In fact, this is a second order, this is a first order, yet we have the same transfer function, okay? So the transfer function was something like this, remember? It's a G of S, this is the input, it's an input-output relationship. The input is U, the output is Y. So if this is the transfer function, it actually means that you give this one and you get this one out, right? And in fact, it is the same input, same output, relationship, though the dynamic systems look different. You see that? It's a bit strange if you think about it. I mean, think you have two dynamic systems. One is small, another one is complex. You give one input to this one transfer function, you get one output, and then you have a total different dynamic system. You give the same input, but you get the same output. It just turns out to be, it just, it is, the, the big transfer functions uh, or the big dynamic system is arranged such that the input gives you a simple output just like a smaller system where you give an input and an output. So there's something that is not really understandable here because this is a second order system. So as I, as I said, first observation, two different dynamic systems, one transfer function, so that's one thing. Second observation, that's the first order, that's the second order. Why do we have only one root over here? Right, that's the second observation. So let me concentrate on this dynamic system a little bit more and try to see what is missing in this dynamic system so that we get a first order characteristic equation, though this is a second order system. Okay? So let's take a closer look at this. And hopefully, we'll find what is missing in that equation. So, let me write this in a little bit more open. x1 dot is equal to minus x1, right, plus 2u. x2 dot is equal to minus x2. Is that right? Yes. And y is equal to 3x1 plus 2x2. So this is, this is the system here. And I say it's a single input, single output system. And for some reason, the stability is all, all depends on a first order system. So is there anything strange you see about this system? Maybe look at the dynamics of the states. Let me help you by asking questions. U is the control. That's me. I'm giving the control. Can I change x1 by giving controls? Yes, of course. I change U, x1 will change, right? Can I change x2 by giving controls? Not, right? Because there's no U that will affect X2. Worse, X2 is not connected to X1. If the system would look like this, could I influence X2 by changing the controls? Yes, yes right. Because you, I would control U, you would change X1, and X1 would change X2, right? So I could influence x2 with u if the system was like this. But if the system now looks like that, with my control u, I can influence x1. But I, there's no way I can in, in include influence x2. You see that? Because u is not a function, uh, u is not connected to x2 at all. There's no u, right? But there's also no x1 because u could be influencing x1 and x1 could influence x2. But since there's also no x1, x2 is literally by itself. 
we have no control over xu. Okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> we have no control over x2. There's no connection. So it's a dynamic in the system somewhere over which I have no control. I basically say the state x2 cannot be controlled. I have no influence over x2. x2 is doing something over which I have no control over. Okay? So this is what we mean by controllability. Now I will give you an official or a precise definition of controllability, but this is what I mean. I just mean there is, a di there is dynamics in the system or there are points in the state space over which I don't have control over. Okay? And this is some sort of a deficiency in the state space representation that results in all sorts of things, one of which is that this one here. The stability is not really depending on x2 anymore because it's kind of independent, you, you think, right? It's sort of independent. Although if x2 grows to infinity, then this might not grow to infinity. I mean, you know, we can discuss back and forth, but you got my point, right? So one of the things is not really influenced by the control, okay? So, but on the output, I can see x1 and x2 because x1 is, has an influence to y, x2 has an influence to y, so both of them, we can see in y, there's an influence of both of them to y, so that is good, but I cannot control x2. Okay, so there is a controllability problem. Controllability of x2 is in question. Okay, so this is my first observation. And we will talk about this, and this, is, this has something, obviously something to do with controllability. All right, and just by looking at this, okay, it's not so easy to see it immediately. All, because it's a two by two system, it might be a, a bit simpler, but imagine this to be a four by four, five by five, looking very complex, then this kind of analysis might not be very easy. You cannot immediately see it. And then you need some sort of a test or some sort of an analysis to see if the system is controllable in first place. Because if I would ask you to design a controller to control X2, you couldn't. There's no influence on the X2 through you. All controllers will try to give controls to you, but that will only inf influence X1. There wouldn't be an influence to X2. So you cannot design a controller to, design X, uh, to control X2. So if I would give you a system like this and say, design a controller in order to stabilize X2, your answer would be, I cannot because x2 is not a controllable state, okay? And I do this sometimes in exams. I give you a system where one of the states is not controllable, and then I ask you to design a controller, and you will spend an hour trying to design a controller, and it will not work, okay? And the smart student will check the controllability and say, oh, it's uncontrollable, and skip the question in five minutes, okay? So always check controllability, but we will I will show you how to check controllability, okay? Before we go into that, I will give you one more example because there is also something called observability and that would be my example number three. And please keep that in, in your notes as well. X dot is equal to minus two, zero, zero minus one, x one, x two, plus two, one, u y is equal to 3, 0, x1, x2, okay? It's a similar uh, thing, but it's, it's, it's a bit different. It's a bit different. So um, that's, that's what it looks like. Okay, so if you do the transfer function trick that I did over there, the transfer function of this is, believe it or not, is also 6 divided by s plus 2, okay? That's also the transfer function. So second order system, transfer function is first order. There has to be something that is not matching here because um, 
the characteristic equation is, is of first order. And another verification that three different dynamic systems actually have the same transfer function. Which makes a little bit sense because you can arrange the inside the way you want. If the input-output relationship is the same, it doesn't mean what the order is, right? Anyway, let's try to analyze this one, example number three, and make sense of that as well. <coughs> So <coughs> that is x1 is equal to minus 2 x1 right, plus 2u x2 dot is equal to minus x2 plus u y is equal to 3x1. All right. So first of all, can you control x1 with u? Of course. Can you control x2 with u? Yes, no problem. Now, look at the output. The output is 3x1. The question is the following. Will I have, in my measurement, I'm measuring x1, will I have any clue about x2? Because if you look at this one, it has x1 and x2 in the measurements. So if x1 is constant, for example, and x2 is changing, you will see something over here, or vice versa. Okay? Here, I don't have an x2. I have only x1. That's one thing. A bigger problem is, again, x1 and x2 are not connected. I mean, I can influence them independently, but they are not connected. I can only measure x1. So for instance, if the problem would look like this, plus x1 um, plus u or let me let me do it a little bit no let me do it like this so it would be a little bit more obvious plus x2 let's put it like this so make it a little bit more obvious if x2 is changing x1 would be changing and therefore, I would see something over here. So x1 and x2 would be somewhat connected. And I would see the change in x2 in x1, and that would be reflected in the measurement. But if you remove this, then the change in x1, you will see, but the change in x2 will be independent somewhat from x1, and therefore in the measurement. So if I remove this, I basically have no clue, no measurement, no information about x2 whatsoever. Because x2 stays by itself, alone, no connection to x1, and I only measure x1. And x2 is not connected to x1, x1 is not connected to x2. There's no connection between them, two different, two equations that are virtually working independently. And the output only measures x1. You see that? So basically, I have no information about x2 in my measurement. x2 is there. I know I can, I can influence it with my control. However, I can't measure it. I can't even measure a variable that is somewhat related to it. Okay? Think of it like this. Think of it of an airplane. And let's say you are measuring P, Q, and R. P, Q, and R, right? Angular rates. But you don't have a measurement for the Euler angles, theta, phi, and psi. Now, looking at P, Q, and R, you could have some sort of an estimation of the angular or of the Euler angles as well, right? So, which means, although you don't measure the Euler angles, because you know P, Q, and R, you have some information about theta, phi, and psi. Okay? But imagine you don't measure PQNR, you just measure forward velocity with your pitot tube. Can you estimate theta phi and psi? Probably not. Can you influence theta phi and psi with your pilot controls? Yes. Can you measure it? No. Do you know what's going on at all 
in terms of the Euler angles? We have no clue. So which means in, in, on that, uh, at that stage, the Euler angles would be not observable, not viewable to us. Right? It is there, we know it's there, it's just that I don't know what they do. I know I can influence them, but I don't measure them. I don't have to measure theta phi and psi directly. I can measure other things and use that other information to estimate theta phi and psi. The question is, can I do it? Now, that's what we call observability. Can you observe, can you still estimate that variable that is not measured directly, or even it could be measured directly, but do you have a clue what it is doing? Okay. In this case, we have no clue over x2. x2 is not in the measurement. x2 is not related to x1. Two independent things, dynamics that, that, that happen independently. I'm only measuring one of them, and this is not connected to this. So how can I have any information about x2? I would have information about x2 if it was here, or if x2 was somewhere here, so that x2 would be connected to x1, or vice versa, x1 would be here, in which case x1 would affect x2, and I would know what x1 is, and therefore I would know its effect, and so on and so forth. There would be some sort of a connection. So what we are saying here is that we have observability of x2 is in question. Okay, so this is now the case where we have no clue what that dynamic is. Although we can control it, it is not in the measurement. In which case, it's difficult to control. Imagine an airplane, you have all controls, you, can, you know you can influence the Euler angles, but can you control it if you don't have it in the measurement? The answer is no. So, when I was writing you the controller last time, or, or the dynamics of the controller, right, we had an input, u, output, x or y. You have a feedback controller. Classic controller, okay? So, what I'm trying to say is, if you cannot control the system, that's controllability. If you cannot influence the states, if you cannot measure the outcome, which is this part, forget about your controller. Your controller needs to be able to do two things. Observe what's going on, affect the system in a way with its controls. So that's why you need two things that systems should be able to do or should have the property. It should be observable and it should be controllable. If this doesn't work, you can't design a controller. Okay? So, I hope you understood the concept. Yes? No. Everything we do in this class is a linear system. Will be a linear system. Okay? Observe the concepts of observability and controllability, the way I explained here, is only valid for linear systems. Okay? It's not valid for nonlinear systems. And everything will start, as I said from the previous classes, we have a nonlinear system, linearized are about equilibrium point, and this is my linear system. Now we talk, okay? So the analysis here provided is only for linear systems, okay? Okay, if you understood the concept, I wanna make now precise definitions of these things and, and show you precisely how we do it. Is that okay? All right.
Okay, first we start one with controllability. And here is the official definition. An LTI system, LTI means linear time invariant system, is controllable if, if and only if, let's put it like that, for all x stars t <coughs> and every t greater than zero there exists. Input function u of t such that in finite time, such that go from x zero zero two x two. An LTI system. LTI means linear time invariant system. Linear time <coughs> invariant system. And the linear time invariant system is what we had been talking about all this time. X dot is equal to AX plus BU and y is equal to cx plus du, okay? This is an LTI system, a linear time invariant system because, first of all, the system is linear. Secondly, it is time invariant, which means, of course, x is changing in time. However, a, b, c, d are constant matrices. They don't change in time, okay? So a, b, c, d are time invariant, which means the numbers in A are numbers that don't change in time. In fact, you could have this, right? The A matrix could, be, could have looked like this. I don't know. Um, you know, we have two, three, five, six, but they could be changing in time. I mean, in time, it, it might look like this which means as time goes by, three becomes four, it becomes five, six, seven, so it changes in time, okay? That would be a time varying system, so this system would be changing as time goes by. But the assumption here is that this system is constant as time goes by, therefore we call it time invariant. So therefore this system is called linear time invariant, and I will call this LTI for the remainder of this class. Okay, when I say it, LTI system, I mean a linear time invariant system. It basically means that the matrices are constant. Okay, so an LTI system is controllable if and only if for every x star and every t grows greater than zero, there exists an input function ut and where t is a finite time such that the system states go from x0 to x star in that time. So what we are saying is this, let's say this is a two-dimensional system. That's, I, I like to give examples in two-dimensional systems because it's easier to show. Let's say I have two states, x1 and x2. And x0, 0 here is my starting point, okay? And if I can go from here to any point on this place to every point which is an x star if I can go to every point in x star within a finite time okay t is finite <coughs> if I can go there in finite time and if there if I can go there with permissible UTs permissible means that your actuator doesn't saturate okay <laughs> or it is not infinite, u is not equal to infinity. Permissibles meaning that there are controls that you can use. If you can go from here to here, 
in finite time in a time t. Not in infinity, not approaching. You know, we, we are going there, but we will be there in infinity. You know, not, not that kind of thing. We need to be there in finite time. In three seconds, five seconds, five hours, whatever. If I can do this for every x star, so if I can go everywhere in finite time, in the state space, if I can go to every x star with permissible UTs in finite time, I will call this LTI system a controllable system. Okay? I will say this system is controllable. Okay? So the conditions are a few conditions. One, I have to be able to go to all X stars. Two, controls must be permissible. Three, I need to be there in finite time. What do I mean by finite time? Let me give you an example. Let's say that here I have an X star, okay? And let's say I'm doing this. Trying to get there, trying to get there, trying to get there, and this is going on and on and on, and in infinity, I'm reaching that point. I will reach that point, but as time goes to infinity, I will never reach it. I'm approaching, it's like an asymptotic approach, right? And I'm going there, but it's not really there. It will be there in infinity. This is not a controllable point. This is not a controllable state. Because I'm reaching there not in finite time, but in infinite time. So this is not controllable. Okay? Or let's say there's a, there's a state here. I can't go there at all. I mean, my controls take me here, they take me there, but I, I just cannot get there. So I have an uncontrollable state, that's kind of more obvious. I need to be going to all X stars, okay? So every now and then in exams I will ask you to make a definition of controllability. Don't explain me this, <laughs> okay? Imagine an A, blah, 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 no. I want you to understand this, and you don't have to memorize this definition, okay? Don't memorize this sentence, just try to understand. You need to go there in finite time, you need to have permissible controls, and this has to be true for all x stars in the state space, then this LTI is called controllable. Okay? Yes? Yeah. Well, LTI, there's an x dot. This system is a function of time. X moves in time. LTI meaning A is constant, B is constant. That's what's time invariant. X changes in time. X changes in time. Y changes in time. But A, constant, the matrix. That's what's not time invariant. B, C, D. They are time invariant. Understood now? Okay. Any other questions? All right. I have one more definition for this. A state x star not equal to zero is uncontrollable if the forced state not be achieved using permissible controls from any x0.
a state x star not equal to 0 because x0 is supposed to be the starting point, right? I mean, let me talk about the starting point as well. I mean, let's, let's, let me first do the definition and then we can talk about the starting point. So if state is x star, which is not the starting point because the starting point is by definition we are there. So any point but not x star, so x star is somewhere here. It's uncontrollable if the forced state response xt cannot be achieved. So there's no forced, there's no xt that takes me there. Cannot be achieved using permissible controls. So I have permissible controls to do this. I cannot achieve this. Then x star is called uncontrollable. So this is an uncontrollable state. state because I can simply not reach it with permissible controls. Okay. So it follows from here, it follows from here, this would qualify as a theorem giving these two definitions. Uh, theorem would say an LTI system is controllable if and only if it has no uncontrollable states. Okay? An LTI system is controllable if and only if it has no uncontrollable states. Well, that's kind of it follows from those two definitions. <coughs> because this is a definition, I would remove this if and only if. I think if is enough because it is a definition. So I think this is kind of straightforward now. All states must be control. Uh, you must be able to reach each control, each each state. And so this is that. Well, let me talk a little bit about this initial condition x zero zero. Right, everything must be reached from x zero zero. Everything must be reached from x zero zero. So how about reaching another point x star, let's say two, from this one? Right. I mean, I never talk about going from here to here. I always talk about going from here to here, right? Well, you might see this in two ways. One might be you're going from here to here. You might probably also go back and then maybe go this way. However, more importantly, what I consider to be x0 is really up to me. It is a reference point where I put my coordinate system. I could move this coordinate system to this point, x1 and x2, and now this point is my x0, and then I could see if I can go from here to here, from here to here. Understand? I mean, when I say x0, this is just a reference point. What I'm trying to say, let's say you have x1 and x2, right? x1 and x2, these are states of x1 and x2. It's a two-dimensional state space, okay? Now, you can put your coordinate system anywhere you want. You can put the coordinate system here, or you can put it here, or you can put it there. x1, x2, x1, x2, x1, x2. And the system will really not change. I mean, think of the example I did at the previous class where I had this, right? Remember, it was like that, and I put y over here. So would the problem change if I would put, I don't know, y over here? Would the problem change? Would the analysis change? Would it turn out to be um, stable if you put it here or unstable if you put it here? No, it's the same dynamic problem. This is just a way to measure things, right? 
So where you put your reference system, it really doesn't matter. It's the same thing with this one. I mean, I'm saying x0, where is it? x0, 0 to x star. OK, x0 is here, go to x star. Yeah, but what about if I move this control, uh, this, this, this reference system to x star, what about then? Well, then, then this will be my reference point and I should be able to go anywhere. In fact, this definition now means that regardless where I put my coordinate system, I should be able to go anywhere. So if I have the coordinate system here and this is my x star, then I should be able to go here. In fact, I should be able to, if this, is, this point is an x star, then I should be able to go here. But if now this is my coordinate system, then I should be able to go from here to this point back. Or I should be able to go from here to here, or from here to here. Basically, although the system, although the definition says only from x0 to x star, since I will be able to change my coordinate system anywhere I want, it really means from any point to any point. See that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The question is, it's a good question. An airplane, for instance, a commercial airplane would not go 90 degrees in pitch angle. So would I limit the controller, the, the, the states, would I limit the states to states that are that, that are achievable? Or would I not achieve? Well, you have to remember, this is a definition for linear systems. For linear systems, there is no limit of 90 degrees, 100 degrees, 5,000 degrees, 1 million degrees, right? Linear system goes forever, okay? For a nonlinear system, you're obviously right. Okay? This is a property of the linear system, and the linear systems, they can go to infinity. I always give that example. Remember the CL alpha graph, right, of, of airplanes. CL alpha looks like that, right? A lot of people, they plot this. They say, after a while, well, what, if, it's an, um, uh, if it's an airfoil or a wing, or whatever, it will start stalling, and therefore CL will drop. It is linear in this part. Then that's a nonlinearity, right? If I were to represent though CL alpha, CL equals A times alpha, if I represent this as a linear system like this, then this doesn't know about uh, stall. In fact, this will go to infinity. You give alpha equals one million, and you will get CL equals two million. Does it make sense? No. Is it a linear system? Yes, that's exactly what a linear system is. So when I work with LTI systems of, of airplanes, you have to be very careful. You might have theta equals one million. Doesn't mean it's a solution, okay? But the controllability here is a property of the linear system. So it has to be reached everything. You need to be able to reach that one million theta though it doesn't make sense, but it's a linear system. Understood? It makes sense? Okay. So never forget that perspective that we are in the world of linear systems. In linear systems, they are straight lines, they go to infinity. Okay? All right. I think it's a good time to have a break. Next hour, we'll talk about observability.